to Living in Surrender with your host, Faith Valentina. Um, hey guys, I know it's been about two weeks, so I'm so sorry about the delay with posting. I've been trying to post every week, um, but I am a part of the, some of the states that were affected by Hurricane Milton. Um, so that like, I lost power for days, you know, like everyone in my area, all my friends and family, like we've all just kind of been out of power for a couple of days. Um, and then there was that, then my phone broke the same day of the, when the hurricane was going on and my phone completely shattered. So I had no contact with the, you know, except through Instagram and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's been a little bit of a battle for your girl. You know, the enemy's a little mad <laughs> trying to keep me from posting, but I am back and better than ever. So thank God. And, um, uh, I've truly just been taking this time to really, you know, also focus on my walk with the Lord you know, work out some kinks that I was still going through and things I was still struggling with and just truly submitting everything to the Lord. Um, so yes, I'm so glad to be back. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, I hope you guys have had a blessed, you know, past couple of weeks. And um, so I just pray that, you know, in this moment, this video finds you. As you can see by the title today, we're going to be talking about how we have to allow the Lord to search our hearts. And that's something that's been really, really, really prominent in my life for the past couple of weeks is that reminder to continue to ask the Lord to search my heart and we're going to get into that but um so as we go into today as we pray and as we you know go through this little you know podcast session together um truly truly allow your heart posture to be open to the Lord allow yourself to desire more of him and for him to work in your heart work in your mind and truly just allow him to guide every aspect of your life um so yes, I do want to start off um, by praying. I can't wait until the day that I have like announcements and I can be like, okay guys, so da -da 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 -da, or like maybe a promotion or something, I don't know. But this is not for my glory, it's for God's glory. But I know usually other YouTubers like have to do, you know, promotions or you know, um, like they have, you know, little, okay guys, so updating you on this and updating you on that, but we're still getting into it. But someday on God's grace and on God's timing, it'll happen. Um, but yeah, so there's no, you know, there's no need to really dilly-dally. I just want to really get into this word. It's been on my heart for a couple of days now. Um, and yeah, so let's bow our heads and let's just surrender this time together to the Lord. <sighs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for this moment, for me and the viewer on the other side of the screen. Lord, right now, I just want to thank you so much just for keeping me and those that I know and love safe during that storm, Lord, and anyone that's watching right now that had to go through that storm as well. I thank you so much for keeping my brother or sister in Christ safe on the other side of the screen. And Lord, we just, we, we truly just want to spend these next couple of minutes with you, Lord God, learning to surrender our hearts to you, learning how to live a life that's appealing to you, learning how to surrender, walking in full surrender, Lord God. We just want to abide in you and to trust in you in every aspect of our lives, Lord. So that's why with today and what we're talking about, I pray that you would search our hearts, Lord, and you would just expose anything that's keeping us away from you, Lord, and truly, truly, truly draw us near to you as you draw near to us. Lord God, I love you and I praise you, and it's in your magnificent and wonderful name we pray. Amen. And Holy Spirit, we invite you. Jesus, we invite you. And Abba, our Father, we invite you as well. And our angels, you know, let's just invite everyone from heaven down with us. Um, Lord God, we love you, we praise you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, so I'm trying to do a little do today. Let me know in the comments if you guys like the hair down kind of look, you know, and I'm wearing some Christian merch, you know, make disciples. Um, so yeah, we're going for a little chiller vibe today. Um, but so yes, let's get into the lesson today, um, or the discussion. Um, so yeah, so lately it has been on my heart to really talk about allowing the Lord to search our hearts, allowing the Lord to wreck our heart posture, allowing the Lord to analyze our heart posture. Cause we can say, you know, Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, I'm so thankful for this. So thankful for that. But the Lord really sees our hearts and he sees our heart posture. So he really knows how you feel. He really knows if you enjoy going to service on Sunday or if you're just going to service on Sunday to check up, you know, check a, uh, mark off of your bucket list as being a Christian. He knows if you're spending time with him in the morning or in the afternoon or at night, just to check that box or if you're actually doing it because you desire a deeper relationship with him. So with that being said, the Lord's really been putting it on my heart and through other people in the community as well and through fellowship with other believers. Faith, what is my heart? You know, what's your heart posture? How, what are you really, you know, are you allowing me access to you? Are you allowing me to move in you? Are you allowing me to get rid of things that are hindering your walk with me? Are you going to really surrender and give everything to me? Or are you going to, you know, give me some, but then some things you want to deal with and work out on your own. Some feelings, some, you know, 
things you're going through, you want to hash them out on your own? Or are you actually going to give them to me on a platter of faith and let me move as your king, as your father, as your savior, as your friend, as your provider, as your healer, as your comforter, everything that he is. But us as humans, we oftentimes want to do it our own. That's why the fall in the garden happened. Adam and Eve, they had everything. And then Satan comes in, he's like, hey, what if you had more? What if you were like God? Well, you know, like, and of course, I feel like if I was evil, I'd be like, why don't you eat the apple then, friend? Like, why don't you eat it? Let's all be like God, you know? But that's why the fall happened because us as humans, we always want to do things by ourselves. We want to be independent. We want to be, we, we think that we can do it without God. We think we don't need God. And we do. So um, to dive in today, um, I have a couple different scriptures that we're going to be going and reading over today. Um, but so the first one goes with the title and goes with the whole purpose of this video. And this is going to be Psalm and it's um, chapter 139 and it's going to be verses 23 to 24. And so let's go ahead and pull that up together. You guys know I like that we let's read the Bible together. Um, and I'm not going to put it on the screen because I want us to all actually open our Bibles or if you have today I'm using my phone. So if you have your phone nearby, please pause the video and look up the verse because it's really good to just read it for yourself and to get it in your own spirit as well. Um, so pause the video. Are you back? Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> all right. So if you have the verse like moi, um, let's dive into this verse. So like I said, it's, um, Psalms chapter 139 and it's going to be verses 23 through 24. So it reads, search me at God and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. If there is any offense in me, any offensive way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. Amen. And I know that's like, there's different versions. There's NIV, there's NSAB, there's a whole bunch of different versions. King James version, you know, but the whatever way that your your version is wording this scripture it's the same point search me oh god know my heart test me know my anxious thoughts see if there's any offensive way in me any offensive spirit and that can mean do you have offense towards someone else do you have an offense towards god sometimes we're mad at god and we don't even realize that that's why we're mad you know, maybe he's not answering our prayer soon enough. Maybe he's not doing this. Maybe he's not doing that. Maybe he's not, you know, we don't feel him when we're spending time with him. Maybe like everything's not our way. So if it's not going our way, then we're like, okay, God, we don't feel you. So then you get the spirit of offense towards God. Cause you're like, why aren't you moving? Why aren't you here? When he is, he just needs us to be patient and allow him to search our heart. Allow him to know our anxious thoughts. Allow him to test us. Testing us may be him testing your patience. Maybe him testing. Do you have faith to really push through this storm? And trust that I have a rainbow at the end of the storm for you, my love. You know, like, it's truly search, allowing him to search you. You know, like, literally how, like, when you play that game of Operation, and the doctor's, like, like searching, like, searching for the things. When a surgeon's, you know, sewing up a heart together, he has to search to find where that brokenness is, right? Search to find where that wound is. So he can, but is it going to be a one, two, three? No, it takes time to heal. It takes time to process. It takes, you know, having that patience, having that faith, trusting in the Lord and his ways and just knowing that he has a beautiful plan, you know? Um, and so, and then, so if you have an offense with the Lord, then he can help you get through that. If you, if you give him your heart, if you surrender, or if you, if you have an offense to somebody in your congregation, a friend, a family member, you know, and that spirit of offense, if you don't have forgiveness towards everybody, it'll keep you locked up. Forgiveness is key. We have to forgive. No matter how hard someone hurt you, betrayed you, misled you, whatever it is, you have to forgive. And then if you need to forgive yourself, you need to forgive yourself. Sometimes when we, you know, we fall down in sin, like I said in my very first video, you got to get back up. I think it was my second video, but you got to get back up. You know, repent, turn away, get back up. But when you sit there in shame and you have unforgiveness towards yourself, then it makes you not want to repent. Then it makes you like, oh, I'm just a sinner and I'm going to hell, whatever. Like, I'm just going to live this life and do whatever. No, the Lord wants you to forgive yourself because shame is not of the Lord. Conviction is, but shame is not. So he wants you to get up, forgive yourself, you know, wipe yourself off and continue to press on and seek him. So the same way when it's like someone else in your life, you know, we have to forgive because how can the, how, the Lord can't forgive us so every time we sin if we just want to hold a grudge on everyone that does us wrong. We do the Lord wrong every day. We betray the Lord all the time. 
but his faithfulness is so beautiful and his love for us is so strong and so powerful that he, you know, he always forgives us. He's so quick to give us the other cheek, to show his grace, to show his love, to show his faithfulness to us. So we as Christians now have to love everybody the same way he loves us, and that means forgiving. So allowing the Lord to point out those offenses you may have, whether it's with him, whether it's with yourself, whether it's with somebody else. You know, and leading, and then the last part says, lead me in the way of everlasting life. Once you do all those things and you allow him to analyze your heart, to shape your heart, to re renew your mind, renew your heart, show you the way, show you what you're doing wrong, show you what you're holding on to from your past, and you allow him to break that down, he can truly lead you to the path of everla everlasting life, which is with him. So it all starts with allowing him to have your heart, search your heart renew your heart so yeah so that, that that's really the first one that I wanted to talk about because well I mean it is the title of the video but then you know it's just so important and the Lord's really been putting it on my heart like faith you gotta let me you gotta give me your heart girl you know <laughs> you gotta give it to me my love so that was verse number one so what the other verses that I wanted to get into are now going to talk about um so like I said, the renewal of your mind and also keeping in the factor of, you know, what the Lord says to do when it comes to surrendering things to him, giving it to him. So let's dive in. So it's going to be, I'm just going to read these ones because I have three and they're shorter. They're like one sentence each, but they really tie into everything we're talking about when it comes to, you know, the Lord searching our hearts, us surrendering our hearts to him and us abiding in his word and things like that. Um, so the first one. Pull it up. You can pause it. But this one, I'll, I'll cut some slack. Because like I said, this one's a little bit of a... <laughs> these are quick ones. So if you don't pull these up, it's okay, I guess. But just make sure you're paying attention. Um, so the first one is Isaiah. And it's chapter 41. And it's verse 10. And it says, focus on God's plan for your life and turn to Christ in praise and in reliance. So it's kind of, the, you know, the same thing. If you surrender your heart to him, then you can focus on his, his plan for your life. You can set your mind on things above. If your heart isn't in your hands anymore, it's in the Father's hands, then it's only going to be prosperous. It's only going to be healed. It's only going to, you know, seek his will. It's only going to abide in his presence. You know, it says the heart is deceitful above all else. But if your heart is seeking the Lord, what's there to be deceived about? You still got to be cautious because you have a flesh. You know, your flesh and your spirit are always fighting you good and evil. But your heart, if your heart posture is always focused on the Lord and his will for you and what he wants you to do and abiding in him and being a better you know, Christian or follower of Jesus Christ every single day and truly, truly, truly just surrendering to him every day, it's going to be a lot easier to just keep your focus on his plan for your life and turn to Christ. And then so the second one is, it's Hebrews and it's chapter 12 and it's verses 2. Focus on Jesus, the source and goal of your faith. The other one. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 God should be your ultimate priority so all of these different things tie into him having our heart him searching our heart us being in that surrender to him and truly being like look God nothing else matters what's that song I don't want anyone else what I don't need anything else what you are my one thing bro you know upper room you know upper room but yes He's our one thing. He has to be everything. I don't want anyone else. What? I'm telling. I don't need anything else. Just give me G. Look, y'all. <laughs> I can't sing right now. It's been a long day. But the song pretty much says, I don't want anyone else. I don't need anything else. Give me Jesus. It's, it's Give Me Jesus by Upper Room. Please look it up when you guys are done with the song. A beautiful worship song to truly get into the spirit and to truly just sit in God's presence and remind him and show him that you love him and that all you want is to be in his presence. Um, but I'm getting distracted. Um, but yes, so all of these verses and the first one tie into focusing on him, allowing him to have your heart saying, Lord, nothing in this world matters. I don't want any of this, you know, have me, have me, you know, and that's the first step. Search my heart, oh God. And I and I encourage you guys, I actually challenge you. Say that prayer. You know, the, um, Psalm 39, and I think it, it's um, Psalm 39, and it's verses 20 through 24. Say that prayer every morning. I've been doing it, and the Lord's been really searching me, analyzing me, exposing things to me that I need to change, like, all the time. All the time. You know? So, now, the other verses that I wanted to talk about um, have to do with the renewal of the mind again. 
um, and the renewing of the heart. So we've asked the Lord, we've surrendered it. We've said, Lord, search my heart, analyze my thoughts, show me what I'm doing wrong, Lord. I love you. You know, show me what I can do to seek you further. Show me what I can do to be a better daughter or son in Christ. You know, show me, Lord. Analyze me. So we've already said that prayer to him. He already knows our heart posture is hungry for him. So now we need to actually take the steps to renew the heart. So um, it's going to be in Romans, and it's Romans chapter 12, and it's verses 2. So this verse talks about... Um, not conforming to the ways of the world. So we're gonna read it together. Take pause. Do, 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 do. That was like the Jeopardy song, but like sped up. <laughs> but um, and sorry guys if I'm going fast, but I'm trying to keep my video shorter, but I have a lot of verses I like to talk about and I have a lot I wanna outpour into you guys. But yeah, so <laughs> if I'm going a little bit faster today, excuse that. But um, I just, I want to get the word to you guys, but I don't want to take, you know, forever to do so. Um, so just let me know in the comments if you guys prefer the shorter videos or the longer videos as well. Um, but yeah, so this one is Romans 12 and it's verse 2 and it says, Do not conform, to, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the, what, ooh, a stutter. <laughs> um, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? So, after you've said, Lord, have my heart, after you've said, Lord, search my heart, now it's important your heart belongs to the Lord. So your heart should not belong to the club. Your heart should not belong to your ex. Your heart should not belong to anything that, your heart shouldn't belong to weed. Your heart shouldn't belong to alcohol. Your heart shouldn't belong to these things of the world. Your heart shouldn't belong to sex. Your heart shouldn't belong to money. Your heart shouldn't belong to... No, your heart belongs to the Lord. So do not conform to the ways of this world. Do not be associated with the things of this world. We are called to be set apart as Christians. You know, and I had to learn that. And even in my time with the Lord before this video, I was like, wow, like I really am a part of... I'm not a part of this world. Like I'm not... This is not my home. There is a heaven that I'm looking forward to going to. Do not be conformed. Be set apart. I want people, when I walk in the room... She, something's off about her. Something's different. A good different. Something's different about her. And then when I open my mouth, oh, she's a believer of Jesus Christ. Now I'm interested because now this is actually an example of someone that walks with the Lord. Wow, she's actually walking out with the, by the fruits of the Spirit. And that brings me to the last verse I wanted to talk about. Galatians, and this is just reminding us of what the fruits of the Spirit are. So this one is Galatians, and it's chapter 5, and it's verses 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there's no law. So when you're a part of, set apart from this world, those are the traits that people are looking for to set you apart. If you're always angry, cranky, sassy, always want to argue with somebody, you're always, you know, you're greedy, you know, you're, not, you're impatient, you're, those are fruits of the world. I mean, if you're set apart and you're a w walking as a son of God or as a woman of God, a man of God, I should say, sorry, because then I said a girl of God. So men, you guys are men. You guys are boys. I'm sorry. <laughs> men of God or women of God, then you're, cho you're called to be set apart. So you have to live by those fruits of the spirit. And every day I try to remind myself, I said, Lord, please allow me to walk with love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, all of them, because I need, that's what helps me represent Christ. That's what helps me. So when you submit your heart to him and you allow him to change your heart posture, then your heart posture can overflow with his love for everyone around you so that they can see him in you. You guys catch my flow? When you surrender your heart to him, he can give your heart to others. He can allow you to use your heart so it can reach their hearts. You get what I'm saying? When you surrender your heart to him and you give him everything, you say, you know what, Lord, I'm done with the world. I want you, Lord. I'm going to follow you. I pick up my cross and I deny my flesh and I kill my flesh right now. Have me. Then he can move. Then he can start open heart surgery on your heart and restore you to what he's called you to be, who he's, who he has called you to be, what, what your purpose is in this life. When you're clouded by this world and, and your vision is distorted and you're doing the things that the enemy wants you to do, you're not going to fulfill your purpose and your calling in the, and, and, um, for God. 
and for his, and, and what he's called you to do make disciples you know we are oops sorry they got <laughs> make disciples we are called to live a life apart from this world we should not be in a function and blend in with everyone else that's acting a fool we are called to be different and set apart and so today I want to close with just reminding us it is so important to not fit in with this world. You know, don't feel tempted to associate with those of this, you know, and Jesus, because everyone argues about this. Okay, well, Jesus hung around the sinners. He did, but did he partake? No, he did not partake. He set himself apart so he could be the example, so he could be the light in that scenario, at that function, in that situation that people were drawn to him. So the sinners came to him like, ooh, you're different who are you? What's your story? How can I be like you? And that's how people got saved when they were around Jesus. So we're called to be like Jesus. We are made in the image of Jesus and God the Father. So we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you've been, you know, you died yourself and you accepted him into your heart, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. He's in your temple. You know, if you're, of course, if you're living the right way and you're living by the fruits of the Spirit and you're not living in the world, he's inside of you. So now you are called you, yes you, and me, yes me, we are called to be disciples and we are called to go and be fishers of men. So today I leave you with this, guys, get pumped up, ask the Lord to search your heart, give him your heart today. You know, when you allow the Lord to shape you and grow you, it is the most beautiful thing because then people can't hurt you as much, or at least as deeply, you know? Someone hurts you, someone offends you, someone does something. All you want to do is pray for them, you know? Step back and say, wow, Lord, I really hope that you help them and lead them and give them peace like you did and transform their heart like you transformed my heart. You know, your whole perspective is different when you give your heart to the Lord. So today, guys, please... As this video closes, I hope you have a smile on your face and I hope you are encouraged. Surrender your heart to the Lord today. Seek Him above all else. Seek Him, seek Him, seek Him, seek Him, seek Him. He loves you so, 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 so much. Set your mind on things above. Surrender your heart to Him. Give Him everything. Bear your fruit. What's in your basket? Tomorrow morning when you wake up, think about what's in my basket? What am I giving to other people? Am I giving out rotten, rotten apples and rotten pears and rotten oranges? Or am I giving out ripe, beautiful oranges, beautiful apples, beautiful grapes, beautiful strawberries? What are you feeding God's people? I hope you guys have a wonderful and blessed rest of your day. Remember, today, say that prayer. Say Psalms 39, 22 through 23. Search my heart, O Lord. Test me. Know my heart. Know my anxious thoughts. Reveal any offensive spirit inside of me and lead me down the paths of righteousness. Ask the Lord to give you fruits of the Spirit. Ask the Lord to talk to you. Ask the Lord to reveal himself to you. And I promise he will, my brother or sister in Christ. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. Please comment down um, just how you feel about this video. Any fruits that you feel like the Lord has been blessing you with and, and, and outpouring into you. And just truly, truly, truly like, comment, subscribe so that this can get out to other people. So that we can all just become united in Christ and just on fire for him and just living by the Spirit. I hope you guys have a blessed and wonderful day and continue to live in surrender. Bye.